Now we'll look at the concept of a loop transfer function. If we write the characteristic equation in this form, c of s equal to 1 plus kgl equal to 0, where k is the parameter that we are going to change, gl, when gl is the loop transfer function. For example, if I have c of s as s squared times s plus k plus 2 times s plus 1 equal to 0, I multiply that out, gather all the terms that have k and those terms that don't have k together. These are the terms that don't have k. This is the term that has k. Divide the terms that have k with the terms that don't have k. In this case, I divide s squared by s cubed plus 2s plus 2. Then I get a characteristic equation this form 1 plus k times s squared divided by s cubed plus 2s plus 2. Now the loop transfer function is this. So gl is s squared divided by s cubed plus 2s plus 2. Properties of a, uh, the loop transfer function if a point in the complex plane s0 lies on the root locus, then it satisfies the characteristic equation. So I can write characteristic equation evaluated s0, which is 1 plus kgl evaluated at s0 equal to 0 which means I can write k times gl evaluated s0 equal to minus 1. Now notice that this s0 is, is a complex number, so this whole thing is a complex number. k is real. So for a complex number, you can find the magnitude and angle. You can write k is 1 divided by magnitude of gl evaluated s0. And you can say that the angle of GL, so GL, if you write what GL is, GL equal to minus 1 divided by K, which is a negative number. The, uh, if you treat a negative number as a complex number, the phase of the negative number is pi and multiples of pi, odd multiples of pi. So the angle of GL evaluated as naught is 2n plus 1 pi odd multiples of pi. Phase and magnitude transfer function. This is again something that is important. We'll look at it by working out an example. Let's say given GL as S squared divided by S cubed plus 2S plus 2, evaluate the phase and magnitude at S equal to 1 plus I. All you do is substitute for S as S equal to 1 plus I. You multiply that out, this is what you get, magnitude of GL evaluated at s equal to 1 plus i is magnitude of this number times magnitude of this number divided by magnitude of this number and hopefully you know how to do the magnitude of complex numbers and that equal to 2 divided by 5 times root 2 and phase is equal to the angle of this number. So angle of this number is nothing but angle of 1 plus i times 2 minus angle of 2 plus 4i because 2 plus 4i is on the denominator and angle of this number is the coefficient of the complex part divided by the tan inverse of the coefficient of the complex part divided by the coefficient of the real part. So this is tan inverse of 1 divided by 1 is 2 times tan inverse of 1 minus tan inverse of 4 by 2 which is tan inverse of 2. Root looks by hand. Uh, the first step is to plot the poles and zeros of the loop transfer function. Why this is important because at k equal to 0 closed loop poles of the system are at the poles of the loop transfer function. At k equal to infinity the closed loop poles of the transfer of the transfer function are at the zeros of the loop transfer function, closed loop system poles. So let's look at an example here, GL of s is s times s plus 0.5 divided by s plus 1 times s squared minus 4s plus 8. This is a third order system, it's cubic root, cubic at the bottom here, third order system. There will be three branches to the root locus. So poles of the system uh, poles of the, I should say, the loop transfer function are at minus 1, 2, plus or minus 2i. 
zeros are at 0 at minus 0 0.5 uh, that's our uh, complex plane we plot the poles with a cross so this is 2 plus or minus 2i and one pole at minus 1 the zeros are at 0 and minus 0 0.5 so at k equal to 0, the root locus is at the poles. At k equal to infinity, the root locus is at zeros or at infinity. So the root, start, root locus starts at poles, at the poles of the loop transfer function and ends at zeros of the loop transfer function or at infinity. Number of branches equal to number of poles for the loop transfer function so there are since there are three poles we have three branches the first second step is to find the root locus on the real axis now there will be root locus on the real axis if there are uh, poles or zeros on the real axis since there are poles and zeros in the real axis there is going to be root locus here so the poles and zeros on the real axis divide the real axis into a bunch of segments. So here there is one segment, this is one segment, this is the second segment between the two zeros, this is the third segment here, and then there's a fourth segment starting from here going to minus infinity. The question is where is the root locus on the real axis? Which segment? Is it this segment, this segment, this segment, or this segment? The rule that you're going to follow is root locus on the real axis exists to the left of an odd number of real poles and zeros to the left of an odd number of real poles and zeros so this segment it is to the left of zero number of real poles and zeros you need to just count real poles and zeros not the complex poles and zeros so these two are ignored here so this segment is to the left of a zero number of real poles and zeros. Zero is the even number, therefore there cannot be root locus here. Now when you look at this segment here, this segment is to the left of one real zero, this one. One is an odd number, therefore there is root locus here. For this segment, this segment is to the left of two real zeros this one and this one, 2 is an even number, therefore there cannot be root locus here. And then finally for this segment, it's the left of an odd number of real poles and zeros, why? There is two zeros, one pole, therefore three real poles and zeros, three is an odd number, therefore there is root locus here. That's where the root locus is.